Hey, before we get going, I wanted to mention I'm giving away two free copies of the Halo Wars 2 official strategy guide. This thing is beautiful, contains a ton of information about multiplayer strategies, blitz strategies, everything you want to know about the campaign. For theory crafters, beginners alike, this thing is a drop-dead gorgeous resource to have in your arsenal if you're somebody who's going to enjoy Halo Wars 2. It can effectively make you a better player and get a lot more out of this game. All you have to do to be entered is like the video, leave a comment down below, and I will select a winner one week from the release date of this video. Thanks and enjoy. What's good everybody, it's BBK Dragoon here with Halo Wars 2 Multiplayer Tips. Today we're going to go through the hotkeys that you absolutely must know for both controller and keyboard players. We're going to talk about the rock, paper, scissors, counter unit concept, which is critical it's very foundational to Halo Wars 2 multiplayer. We're going to talk about special abilities, leader powers, focus fire, scouting, game phases, macro versus micro, and basically RTS fundamentals that you guys want to have in your bag. Halo Wars 2 can be rather complicated and overwhelming, especially if you're new to RTS games, and I'm hoping this video is going to do a good job of giving you guys some practical examples and demonstrations of what counter units are how to actually move and create units quickly and build a solid macro foundation for your multiplayer game. So let's jump into the hotkeys. When the game starts, the camera is always zoomed in a little bit and you're gonna wanna pull that back. The camera zoom is on the right stick, up and down. On keyboard, it is page up and page down. When the match starts, I always zoom out. I want the biggest picture of the map that I can possibly get. If you wanna rotate the camera, you can also do that with the right stick on controller or the insert or delete keys on your keyboard. To select units, just a singular unit, highlight them and tap A. On PC, all of this is gonna be left click and left dragging over units. To select a larger area of units, hold down the A button, you'll see the circle expand. This allows you to paint over the units that you want to select. While holding A, if you run that cursor across any of the units on the screen and release A, they will now be a part of your new selection. If you wanna select all of the units of a certain type, double click on them or double tap A. So let's say I have five warthogs, I'm gonna double tap A on a warthog and it's going to select all those warthogs that are visible on the screen. You deselect those folks by pressing the B key or on PC by just left clicking anywhere that isn't your units. To issue an order, it is right click or X on the controller. Really important here is the select all units button. For controller, to select all local units, press RB. On PC, press the Q key. All local units refers to all of the units that are visible on the screen. So if you can see them on that particular screen and you press RB or Q, it's going to select all those units on the screen. If you wanna select all units globally, double tap RB on the controller or press the E key on keyboard. This is an extremely important hotkey. Do not forget it. You will be using this frequently in your matches. On controller, in order to move the camera faster, hold down the LB button while scrolling. You'll see a massive speed increase when doing this. It's a helpful way to navigate the map. If you're on PC, you should always be left clicking on the mini map where you want to jump your focus and attention to. The leader power circle is brought up by holding down the left trigger or pressing F on the keyboard. The most important hotkeys for controller players are these. To cycle between bases, press left on the D-pad. You press Z on the keyboard in order to do this. This is critical because you're going to be jumping from base to base, consistently producing units, making upgrades. You need to be very familiar with this one. Don't forget it. To cycle between armies, press down on the D-pad or X on the keyboard. To cycle between recent alerts, it's right on the D-pad and space on the keyboard. To set a global rally point, hold D-pad up and highlight the place that you want. That means when you build a unit, they're going to congregate to that rally point. To do this on PC, it is the Y key. To ping the map, click the left stick where you would like to ping the map. On keyboard, that is G. The second most important set of hotkeys is creating and selecting control groups. Control groups are a safe set of units that you can jump to at any time in the match. In order to do this, make a selection of units, hold right trigger, and then hold the D-pad in a direction. And you'll see in the lower left-hand corner when it assigns a control group. To do this on PC, you just use control one through zero. So all of the top number keys in combination with the control key. If you wanna select this control group, just hold down the right trigger and tap the D-pad in the direction of the control group you want to select. Same thing on PC, you would just tap one if you assigned it to control group one. In order to move the camera 
to this control group, hold down right trigger and double tap the D-pad in the direction of that control group. Same thing on PC. So let's say I assign my units to the up D-pad function. If I want to select them and jump the camera to their location, I'm going to hold down right trigger, double tap up on the D-pad. And if I did it on PC, let's say I send them all to control group one, I'm going to double tap the one key. It may sound complicated, but in practice, you guys will figure this out quickly. Never forget this. On PC, you can create camera location saves. The default for this is holding down control and pressing F5 through F8. That'll let you save four camera locations. And then if you press F5 or F6, it'll jump to that camera location you set up for it. I remap these to F1 through F4 because I don't know of any human hand that can reach control F8 easily. Whereas you can reach control F1 through F4 very quickly. I use camera hotkeys all the time when I'm playing. To pause the game on PC, press F10. That's the gist of it for control groups. Let's talk about the rock, paper, scissors concept. Halo Wars 2 is like a classic RTS game. It's based around counter units. Infantry units are effective against air units. Air units are effective against vehicles. And vehicles are effective against infantry units. This is how you're going to help build your unit compositions in game. So let's say my opponent is going for all infantry. What would be a good counter to that using the rock, paper, scissors concept? Well, a vehicle army would be a great counter unit set. However, in game, rarely are you going to go up against an opponent who builds only one unit type. And the same is true for you. You shouldn't be building a giant army consistent of only one or two different types of units. Another example would be, let's say my opponent is going for an all air army. An infantry army would be very effective against this, as would some anti-air vehicles. It's important that you don't build an entire army just out of counter units. You still want to have a diverse set of unit composition, so you don't only want to have one particular unit. The units in this game have synergy with one another. I think it's best to stick with two sides of this rock, paper, scissors triangle if possible, whether that is infantry vehicles or vehicle air or infantry air is up to you. Learning the rock, paper, scissors concept is extremely critical. Some units have what is called a special ability. These are certain attacks or certain actions that that particular unit can take in addition to its normal attack functions. So if I'm using a Warthog, I can ram into an opponent. The way I activate the special ability is with Y on the controller if I select that unit type, or R on the keyboard. These have their own cooldowns, and it's important that you learn how to use these special abilities. Some of them are designed specifically to work against other enemy types, and they build very uh, perfect counters and synergies to certain unit compositions. You also want to be focused on your leader powers. Leader powers accumulate with this little XP bar that's above your minimap. Once you accumulate enough, you can assign the leader power in your power wheel. Each of the different leaders has a different set of actions and different specialty traits that they can use. Everything from dropping in turrets to healing your forces to increasing the speed of upgrades. You really want to spend a lot of time with different units and use your leader powers effectively. It's more important to use leader powers carefully than it is to just use them as frequently as possible. Save them for large engagements or key moments in a match. You also want to learn how to focus fire. Focus fire is the act of telling your units which enemies to attack in a certain order. So let's say I'm coming into this fight with these enemy units here, and I see that he has a Kodiak in the back that's dealing a lot of splash damage to my units. I don't want to wait for the AI of the units to slowly pick out that target. No, I want to tell my units take out the highest priority threat as quickly as possible. I do that by selecting all my units or selecting key units that I want to attack that particular enemy and right clicking or issuing an attack command on that certain enemy. You want to be doing this in almost all of your fights, picking out the highest priority targets and focus firing them. When you're attacking the enemy's base and he sends additional units to come fight you, switch your focus fire to those enemy units. That way, your units don't take damage while they're focused on the building. They don't want the AI to make the poor decision of, oh, I'm gonna keep attacking the building because that's what the commander told me to do when they're getting roasted from enemies that are literally two or three feet away from them. In future videos, we may talk about stutter stepping, arcs, and a couple of other micro elements that might make your gameplay a little bit better. In the beginning of the game, you're always going to want to get yourself a scouting unit sometime within the first minute and a half. The scouting unit is going to go across the map and you're looking to see, has my enemy expanded? What kind of buildings has he purchased? And what kind of units is he creating? 
Scouting can help you prevent things like getting rushed. A very frustrating thing is getting jackrabbit rushed. If I scout early in the match and I build a barracks and I see that he is building jackrabbits or choppers getting ready for an early game rush, I'm going to create hellbringers that are going to be a counter unit towards early infantry that are going to come and try to attack my base. So here I'll give a practical example of how scouting works in tandem with the rock, paper, scissors philosophy. I see that my opponent early on is not expanding, doesn't have many early game units or tech, and he also looks like he has multiple generators at his initial base. This indicates to me that he's trying to tech up very quickly or turtle. He's trying to stay back and generate a lot of income early on in the match so that later in the game he'll have higher tech units than me. I then respond by pushing units across the map to try and do a little bit of damage to his base. I want to see what kind of units he has, and if he's going to sit back and try and turtle up, I want to do my best to inflict some early game damage upon him. I don't want him sitting back unharassed whatsoever, able to accumulate all the energy that he wants. Early on, if the enemy is going for a lot of energy, then they're not going to have as much money for early game units. The attack reaches a point where it's no longer effective as the enemy has built anti-infantry turrets that are dealing a lot of damage to my forces. Now I'm going to retreat back and push into a different set of units. I build warthogs to try and counter his infantry heavy army that I scouted earlier, since vehicles are good against infantry units. My next fight with the enemy takes out his infantry very well, as my warthogs do the job that they were built to do. However, in this fight, I see that he's building a lot of Kodiaks and tanks, so heavy vehicles. And my warthogs are going to be no match for these vehicles. These kind of tanks are built to take care of my infantry heavy army. I then pull my forces back and make a transition into air, because what counters vehicles in this game? Air. I then proceed an army built of hornets and cyclopses. Hornets are air units very effective against vehicles, and the cyclopses, while being an infantry unit, are effective against vehicles. You guys can look here at the small little chart to see what's effective against different unit types. The thing on the far right is building, so there are some units that are effective against enemy structures. My read on the opponent worked out very well as my air units demolish his vehicles while my cyclops is on the ground soak up all the damage from the tanks. That's a practical example of what scouting and reactions look like. It's a very basic example too of how the rock, paper, scissors concept comes to play in matches. Generally, it's more important to expand and have a healthy economy at home, spending the majority of your effort on a clean, smooth build in which you're not stacking the queues full of five or six units, rather you're building units one at a time, trying to buy one right before the next one completes. That's usually better than trying to have the best micro ever and doing the special abilities at the perfect time with leader powers. Most of the time, the bigger army is going to win in this game. So if you are an effective, strong player who has a good macro foundation underneath you, that's how well you mine and spend your resources, then you're going to outplay a lot of your opponents. This video really only scratches the surface and is a very broad overview of basic strategies and ideas of concepts within Halo Wars 2. If you guys have questions for me or tips of your own, I'd love to hear about them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.